It's very common that an audio source will have unpleasant frequencies due to the limitations of the recording equipment, the proximity of the mic to the source, or the acoustic properties of the set itself. Um, no onions on that chicken sandwich, and where is my salad? Thank you. Hey! The challenge becomes determining exactly which frequencies are causing the problems. The good news is that there's a straightforward process for finding these problems. Start by creating a filter in your parametric EQ with a narrow Q. Boost the gain control to a significant level. Now, sweep the frequency of the filter across the spectrum until the problem tone becomes obnoxious. Usually, harshness in vocals will manifest between 2.5 and 4 kilohertz. Um, no onions on that chicken sandwich, and where is my salad? Thank you. Congratulations, you've successfully identified the frequency that's causing the problem. The solution now is to cut the gain instead of boosting it. And where is my salad? Thank you. Hey, um, no onions on that chicken sandwich. And, and then adjust the cue until sufficient surrounding frequencies are cut to fix the problem. Where is my salad? Thank you. Hey, um, no onions on that. You'll probably want to play with both the gain and cue until you've nailed the issue. Thank you. Hey, um, no onions on that chicken sandwich. And where is my salad? Repeat for any other harsh frequencies. Muddiness in male voices is very often around 250 to 350 hertz, so try cutting here if the voice is sounding muddy. Can somebody please come give me my check? I'm, I'm gonna walk out the door unless some... Can somebody please come give me my check? I'm, I'm gonna walk out the door unless some... Now an important tip when cutting frequencies is that a sound will often occur at several different points in the frequency spectrum. When musical notes increase by one octave, the frequency doubles. Because sound sources often include harmonic tones beyond the fundamental sound, you can sometimes fix problems by looking at multiples of the fundamental frequency. Here, to remove this power line hum... Well, that wasn't your fault either. All I'm saying is... Things are going to get better for me. We notch the frequency at 60 hertz, since we're in the United States. Well, that wasn't your fault either. But we also need to notch at harmonic multiples of 60. Now, rather than doing the math in your head, tools like Adobe Audition's The Hummer handle it for you. You just choose how many harmonics you need to notch to solve the problem. In this case, we really need to notch five harmonics to fix the problem. Well, that wasn't your fault either. All I'm saying is, things are going to get better for me. This causes some problems with the EQ of the dialogue, but we can tweak the EQ some more afterwards, and it's a whole lot better than hearing the line hum. Now, in this shot, an obnoxious cricket threatens to destroy an entire interview. There was just so much done post, it, it was kind of nuts. But by honing in on specific frequencies where the cricket sound is heard, we can eliminate the cricket without dramatically affecting the quality of the interview dialogue. There was just so much done in post, it, it was kind of nuts. Uh, when somebody says, how many visual effects were there? Uh, I could say between 1,000 and 2,000 because I'm used to when you're doing a picture, you have a shot or a cut, and maybe it's a, a three seconds long or less, you mm -hmm. know, and that's a visual effect. Well, we would have a sequence that's three minutes long. As an aside, a new category of audio editing has emerged in recent years. Frequency editing allows audio engineers to delete portions of the frequency spectrum that are causing problems. Uh, when somebody says, how many visual effects? Leaving other sound sources nearly intact. There was just so much done post, it, it was kind of nuts. Isotope is the most famous of these plug-in treatments, but applications like Adobe Audition have their own version of this kind of frequency editing. One really important technique when working with audio is to roll off bass frequencies. Low-end sound can build up, causing all kinds of problems in a mix. For a lot of human voices, frequencies below 300 hertz don't contribute significantly to the vocal timbre or overall tone. You okay, Robin? Is this guy bothering you? Oh, we're on first name basis now. You okay, Robin? Is this guy bothering you? What will occupy these frequencies is wind noise or accidental bumps to the microphone. Hey Henry, how are you? Got something for you. How's the ARC project coming?
If you leave these low end rumbles in, you can often end up with a muddy low end to your mix. By rolling off the low end using a high pass filter, you're really only losing unwanted sound. Well, there's my contribution to the cause. Don't forget to eat the food that's in the box. Hey, Henry, how are you? Got something for you. How's the ARC project coming? Now, of course, if you're mixing James Earl Jones... Am I in my speech and little blessed with a soft phrase of peace? You'll want to be careful not to lose any tonality by rolling off too much bass. So now on some nine moons wasted, they have used their dearest action in the tented field. And little of this great world can I speak more than pertains to feats of broil and battle, and therefore... Usually, anything below about 100 hertz is safe to cut. Professional subwoofers operate at 80 hertz and lower, so you'll ultimately want to save this frequency range for your shake-the-room effects and throbbing bass lines. Now, as we mentioned in a previous video, the best solution to sibilants and plosives is typically to ride the audio levels. But in more severe situations, EQ may be called for. Just a minute. To alleviate sibilants and female voices, try notching in the 6 to 8 kilohertz range. Welcome to Paradise Grill. Sit anywhere you like. Welcome to Paradise Grill. Sit anywhere you like. For males, look in the 4 to 6 kilohertz range. Me. You have a scar on your knee. 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 Again, sweep to find the obnoxious frequency, then cut. But don't cut too much, or you'll give the actor a lisp and end up with a nasty legal letter from their agent. Okay, so we've seen how to remove problem frequencies, but what about enhancing frequencies to shape the sound? Let's take a look at a few helpful guidelines for adding impact to your dialogue tracks. As we mentioned earlier, harsh tones for vocals are typically found between 2.5 and 4 kHz, so you rarely want to add too much there. But a boost above 6 kHz will add an airiness or crispness to the mix without making things unpleasant. What is your fault? It was an accident. I'm falling off your bike at age 10. Use a wide cue for this and don't go overboard. Sweep the frequency to find the best center. At age 10, you still blame yourself for what happened to your dad, but it wasn't your fault. And we've talked about rolling off the bass to avoid a muddy mix, but what if you want to intentionally emphasize it? Peace, for since these arms of mine had seven years pith. You can add some depth to a voice track by applying a boost in the 150 to 600 hertz range. Keep the cue fairly narrow and don't go overboard. You'll want to test out the resulting soundtrack on a system with a powerful low end to make sure you're not overloading the mix. At the lower end, around 150 to 160 hertz, you can add significant impact to a male voice in my speech and little blessed with a soft phrase of peace or thicken a female I voice. I hate you. I hate you. How could you? How could you? Shame on you. I hate you. To generally enhance dialogue, a chicken sandwich and where is my salad? Thank you. Hey. Try boosting around two and a half kilohertz. Remember that this is a common area for harshness, so be subtle with a boost and use a generously wide cue. Hey. Sure. But what are you up to? It's probably best that I don't know. And to add what's called presence to the dialogue, work with frequencies around five kilohertz. Now, those are some of the general principles to help you track down and correct problems or enhance the sound of your dialogue. But before we wrap, let's look at an all too common problem, distant dialogue. Unless a boom is held extremely close to the sound source, the resulting sound recording quickly starts to lose definition. The result will be both boomy and potentially noisy. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'll, I'll just be a minute. Um, thanks for covering for me. As a last ditch effort before resorting to ADR, try cutting the frequencies around 300 hertz with a narrow cue to remove excessive bass. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'll, I'll just be a minute. Um, thanks for covering for me. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'll, I'll just be a minute. Um, thanks for covering. And then try boosting around four kilohertz with a wide cue to brighten the mix. I'll, I'll just be a minute. Um, thanks for covering for me. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'll, I'll just be a minute. Um, thanks for covering for me. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'll, I'll just be a minute. Um, thanks for covering. And that's a wrap.
But to reiterate what we mentioned in our previous video, your listening environment is critical to the success of your mix. This is even more true for EQ work. If your listening environment and monitors aren't neutral, your EQ work could be completely off. Let's recap. Sound is made up of amplitude and frequency, equivalent to the loudness and pitch in common language. Human hearing is typically in the range from 20 hertz to 22 kilohertz. Frequency of a digital sample needs to be double the highest frequency that should be represented, and the bit depth determines how many steps in loudness can be represented. A common industry standard is 24-bit 96 kilohertz, although 48 kilohertz is common as a recording format. EQs come in two common forms, graphic and parametric. A typical parametric EQ includes three controls per filter, the center frequency, contribution to the cause, don't forget to eat the food that's in the box, the gain, in the box. Well, there's my contribution to the cause, don't forget to eat the food that's in the box, and the Q, contribution to the cause, don't forget to eat the food that's in the box. Parametric EQs also usually contain high and low pass filters and shelving controls. Always EQ in the context of the entire mix to avoid creating an unbalanced soundtrack. To correct unwanted tone in the sound, set a parametric filter to a high gain and narrow Q and sweep the spectrum for the location of the offending tone, then adjust the gain and Q appropriately. Hey, um, no onions on that chicken sandwich and where is my salad? Roll off bass frequencies below 300 hertz in sound sources that don't contain low end character to avoid a muddy buildup in the mix. Okay, Robin, is this guy bothering you? Oh, we're on first name basis now. Are you okay, Robin? Is this guy bothering you? And make adjustments at specific frequencies to add airiness, warmth, and power to vocals, or to eliminate problems like sibilance or distant boom placement. Um, thanks for covering for me earlier. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'll, I'll just be a minute. 